along with the coach and welcome to this week's show. We'll take a look back at that great victory over the Stanford Cardinal, preview the Civil War coming up next week, and hopefully have one of the uh, stars of yesterday's game here joining us in the studio, the home studios of the Rich Brooks Show, a little bit later on in the program. We're uh, shuffling a little bit here. We had some problems out at the stadium club, but we're glad you could all join us. Glad that we do have some fans here in the audience as well. They made it up the hill. We want to talk about the Stanford game. Coach, it was a great one for your team. Uh, you know, the pressure continues to mount each and every week, but your defense came out onto the field right off the bat, got a turnover. The offense converted it into a touchdown, and you never trailed all day long. Well, it, uh, it was a great way to respond to the situation at hand uh, where we were going on the road for the first time in five weeks, Todd, and uh, had to get a win to stay in the race. and. Uh, Starting the way we did, I think, was a boost to our confidence. Alex Bolden making the great play to knock the ball up in the air and Paul Jensen getting the interception. And then uh, Danny O'Neill hitting a wide open Kristen McLemore on a third down uh, play. So uh, I think that uh, we got off to a good start and, and the game just grew as we went on. Uh, we didn't run the ball as well as I'd hoped early in the first half, uh, but certainly our passing game, uh, I don't think it, it, maybe it's never looked better. Uh, Danny O'Neill throwing for six touchdowns on the day. Uh, setting a school record just had a remarkable remarkable day you know for the second time in two weeks your offense over 500 yards of total mm -hmm. offense uh, I mean that's a rather remarkable statistic uh, now in college football to see that kind of performance in back-to-back -back weeks well certainly after we've uh, struggled with our offense uh, in the last three or four games going into that uh, game with Arizona State and Stanford but as I mentioned last week uh, those defenses that we were struggling to move the ball against uh, uh, weren't quite uh, uh, in the same category as, as Stanford and Arizona State's. Uh, and you saw what UCLA did to uh, Arizona State uh, last week. Of course, we knocked a couple of their defensive backs out last week and made it a little easier for J.J. Stokes. But <laughs> I, I really think our offense is now coming along, and, and Danny is uh, playing as good, I think, as he's ever played in his career. Our offensive line is uh, continuing uh, to gel, even without Willie Reif last week. Uh, uh, our, our line did a great job of pass protection, zero sacks, zero turn, turnovers on the offense, and three takeaways by the defense uh, against a, 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 an obviously well-designed uh, offense. Uh, we, I thought, did a good job of making the plays, and we kind of had a little letdown in the second half, but uh, that's to be expected. Scott Frost got the start at quarterback for Stanford, and uh, it was pretty obvious a couple of his runs that this guy has tremendous <laughs> athletic ability. Uh, fortunately for your team, you were able to get a, a big lead and force them you know, to get away from their running game and do some things they didn't want to do. Well, the, the, the good thing that we did is that we, uh, we eliminated the plays that he was designed to run on weren't much of a factor. The touchdown that he did score on a 24, 28-yard run, he went through about half our team, but we had him tackle for a five-yard loss on a, on, a, on a sprint out bootleg into the boundary. He reversed his field and went back and went the distance. And, He's as strong and fast of a quarterback uh, running the football as I've seen uh, in, in a long, long time. And now I know why Bill Byrne was so upset when he got out of Nebraska, because <laughs> he'd be great in their offense. You uh, come out of this game uh, in great shape. You've been talking all along, we need to get to 6-1. and one. Well, now you are 6-1 and one with one game remaining. Well, and, and this is where we wanted to be, Todd. Uh, as we started pecking our way uh, uh, into the Pac-10 schedule uh, after the Washington State game. Uh, we, we talked about it as a team that if we could come out of the four-game homestand with four straight wins and go on the road, that we would be in great position to win the championship. And uh, this team has responded each week and done the things that are necessary to accomplish that. And I'm just extremely pleased with uh, their efforts and uh, concentration. And now uh, the toughest job at all, of all is playing your arch rival uh, on the road, uh, they're coming off a great, great win over Washington State, and uh, it should be a great football game. Indeed it is. I know the state's going to be hopping throughout the entire week. We'll preview the Civil War in a little more detail later in the program, but now let's get into the highlights of the Stanford game. As we begin things, you can see the coach and his squad that taking the field. I also want to mention the fans down there that uh, supported your team that came down from the state of Oregon. Wow, what a great job they did as well. It really was a, a great turnout. And there's the play I mentioned to start the game. Uh, Stanford's first play, Alex Molden. Frost backs back to throw, and Alex sits on the corner here. Uh, curl route real good. Breaks the pass up, nice break, and Paul Jensen coming back uh, in his drop, goes up and makes the interception. I think that's his first career pick. It is. We open up with a screen pass on the very first play, and McLemore really made a nice run. He 
That's designed kind of to go inside, and he breaks it back outside. You can't see the initial move out there, but the uh, flanker screen, and you can see he's supposed to come inside, but he breaks it outside and then turns back in and, and picks up some blocks there. Uh, but we pick up a first down. And a couple of plays later, on third and 16. That's as wide open as you get. Unreal. It's a bust, busted coverage. Uh, they had three players out there playing two, and two went one way, and one went the other, and McLemore went in there, and nobody covered him. Uh, uh, maybe they'd forgotten that he hasn't caught so many balls since he's been hurt uh, for a little while, but uh, his uh, touchdown reception, first of three on the day that broke the Oregon school record. For career receptions, he passed Lou Barnes and Ahmad Rashad now with 19. That was number 17 there. And then, once again, it's Jensen making a big hit. Great play by Paul Jensen. I mean, uh, two of the first three plays of the game on defense. He sheds the fullback's block, comes up and, and tackles Bookman for a five-yard loss in the backfield. Just a great start for the, the junior from uh, Lebanon. You guys get it back, can't move it. Matt Belden did a real nice job punting. He really did. Uh, he pinned uh, Stanford deep all day long. Ended up with a 40.8 average, even punting into the short, uh, short end of the field most of the day. Here they come with the option, and as you can see, Coda and Asher, I believe, are there to make the tackle on Frost, and they're trying to have the quarterback keep it. You can see Bookman is the pitch man, and he turns up in the alley, but Coda and Asher are there to stop him. And then on third down and seven, Almost picked by Troy Bailey. Troy Bailey, a lineman's dream, and he is upset. He had it in his hand, and he was actually spinning around and dropped it. Ricky Whittle uh, breaks it off tackle for about three yards. How much did the uh, conditions of the field affect the, the running game? Well, it affected everything. Uh, nice effort here by Danny O'Neill, extending the ball to get the first down. Uh, really what it, it impacted is neither team sacked the quarterback, and neither team's defensive backs could cover very well because the footing uh, is, is so reactive. Nice catch out there by Damron Ricketts, and uh, another one here, and a nice move, and a good run, as he's done so much in, in recent weeks, pick up extra yards after the catch. Uh, the one before that, he got a little too cute and danced too much, and he got his uh, bell lit up, but here he made up for it. Great move there. Uh, and, uh, and a nice move there, breaks another tackle. Just a real tough receiver. So the drive stalls, but Belden comes in, attempts a 27-yard field goal, knocks it through, and it's 10 to nothing. Great job by Ryan Perry Smith on that because the snap was on the ground. So Stanford gets the ball back and trying to get on the board. This is Bookman, can't get anything, loss of three. Kenny Wheaton will be the first one up here on the sweep. Misses the tackle, but Reggie Jordan, who was going home to the Bay Area, uh, came up big with the tackle for a loss. So Stanford has to boot it away, and here you come again. Nice job by Danny O'Neill. Looking down to the bottom, this is a three-step drop, much like we did against Arizona a lot, and now he comes back and gets Damron in between the corner and the safety. A perfect throw. Had to be to get the ball in there. And Dino on the draw play. Oh! Almost. Just couldn't quite shake that tackle, but it looked like he was going to have a long run. As we get into the second quarter highlights, Oregon has the lead 10 to nothing. We pick up the action. Stanford has the football right now, but it's deep in their own territory, as they were most of the first half. Frost to throw, gets a little time, and connects here to Manning for 29 yards. Pretty tough uh, to react as a defensive back, and... and uh when the receiver knows where he's going to run. Here's a scramble play by Frost, uh, the thing that we were most afraid of all day long. This looked like maybe a busted play, and then he just mm -hmm. does it on his own. It's busted by us, too. I mean, it's uh, pretty ugly by us. You can see he's strong, he breaks tackles, and uh, resulted a touchdown in the play that we had him tackle for a five-yard loss. So Stanford right back into the ball game as a result of that play. With the extra point, it's 10-7. You start to feel a little uneasy, you know, because you had control at 10, uh, 10 zip, and now it's a, a three-point game. Right, we're showing this play here because it's the first and only reception by a fullback this year. Well, we had a lot of them last year. We just uh, chose some other weapons, but this is a nice uh, off the waggle pass. We hit Dwayne Jones in the flat, and the big big fella just turns it up the sideline and uh, picks up about 14 yards. Nice, nice play. Fortunately, the drive stalls. The defense uh, 
stop Stanford and you get it right back. Here's some tough running. A little tight end delay to Josh Wilcox. Uh, didn't get the ball very much to the tight ends in this game because the receivers were so open, but what a nice effort by Josh here. Nice catch, first of all, breaks one tackle and just absolutely runs over another Stanford player and almost breaks free. Gain of 17, first down. Second and 10, the next play we see. And this is not exactly how you draw it on the, on the, on the chalkboard, but uh, a nice play. The wide receiver screen, the same one we opened the game with to McLemore, only going back to the split end this time. And you can see Damron stop and get a nice block there. Uh, and now he just kind of improvises and takes it clear across to the other side of the field and picks up a uh, nice first down here. So the ball now spotted at the Stanford 22 yard line, first and 10. And it doesn't take long to put it into the end zone. Danny, great protection. McLemore, touchdown. Crossing route to uh, Kristen, a uh, real nice uh, protection on that play and allowed uh, Danny the time to, to look over the whole field and find the open receiver. So the kick is good, and Oregon has extended its lead back to 10 points again, 17 to 7. Try to go back to the run. Not there, Curtis Moore. Curtis Moore, young redshirt freshman, again from the San Francisco area, steps up big and hits Bookman uh, for, a, for no gain. What a nice play that was. So the offense gets it back again. Little swing pass to Ricky Whittle, picks up about nine. And on a third and two, here's your third down man here, Patrick Johnson gets another first down. People are starting to stay off him a little bit because he's got such good speed and he can, he's learning how to hitch it up pretty good. And here's the uh, big screen pass, Ricky Whittle uh, going the distance off of what we call uh, flow screen. And as you can see here uh, on, on our play of the day today, uh, what we're doing is we start uh, Eric Johansson, who was in here because we had some people hurt at receiver. He comes across in motion and takes the safety with him, which isolates our split end on a corner, and they happen to be in man-to-man. -man. Eli L. Swinton, one of their defensive backs, was right here at the uh, linebacker position, and they were in their dime package. When Ricky Whittle started this way, Swinton came into the pile. We want to crack him anyway, uh, but when uh, Ricketts came down, he went back out because this man had disappeared. Whittle slips back out this way. We suck the rush in. Danny throws it over, and Whittle catches the ball here, and he's got clear sailing down the sideline for the touchdown. Let's take a look at it. He'll have uh, two folks out there helping him out on this run. You can see Johansson went across there in motion. You can see number nine. That's the man who's supposed to cover Ricky Whittle. Well, there's Ricky Whittle over there. And you can see Eric Reed out there getting a nice block. And Ricketts coming back to finish it, and Ricky just splits him, and away he goes. Nice job by Mark Gregg cleaning it up behind him. And Ricky takes it in 51 yards for the touchdown and celebrates over there to the Oregon fans. And this one breaks it open a little bit, 24 to 7, in a very important stretch of this game. You uh, have seen the lead dwindle to three. Now it's up to 17, and you're done. Offense will get it back again. Same uh, post corner route, and uh, they complete it and get a big gain down into our territory. But a great play by Alex Molden, anticipating the slant pass, gets the pick, and gets a 30-yard return. Yeah, that was important because you have good field position now with about two minutes to go in the half. And allowed us to go into our clutch series. You see great coverage by Alex. And Alex does a good job redirecting, locating, picking up some blockers, and taking it out of the short end of the field, trying to get the cut back there. And a 30-yard return. Big, big play. So 2-12 remaining in the quarter after a penalty of five yards against Oregon. Danny O'Neill inside. It comes to McLemore, who was playing with some bruised ribs, but cuts it inside. Gain of 20. And this is a real nice play here. A nice job of running, but more importantly, nice execution. You can see big Steve Harden going out there. Josh Wilcock got a nice block. Uh, McLemore makes a real nice run right there. Sheds two or three tackles and gets us deep into Stanford territory. So on a first down play, Danny throws. And this is another thing we haven't done a lot of this year, dumping the ball off to the backs. So, and uh, 
That was a nice play to Filia. Filia takes it up for the first down. On a fourth down play. Fourth down play. And then with time running out, McLemore, great effort here to get into the end zone. His third touchdown of the day, the 19th of his career, breaking the all-time mark. This is a great individual effort by McLemore. Nice throw on the slant pass. He gets spun around, keeps his feet, and goes out. Uh, interesting thing, uh, Todd, is the uh, the guy's record, he broke, or one of the guy's record, Ahmad Rashad was on our sideline, and uh, he went over and congratulated Kristen after that. He was well aware of that record. Yeah, <laughs> I know he was. <laughs> so there you have it, halftime, 31-7. to As we move into the third quarter, Oregon got the football, unable to move, and it may be the first time in the history of this show. We start a quarter by showing a punt, and in this case, a Matt Belden punt that is down inside the five-yard line moved into the short end of the field. We made a pretty nice drive, but uh, couldn't convert this first down opportunity. And a nice job by Jeff Sherman downing Belden's punt down on about the one and a half yard line. And this is uh, one that was almost blocked there in safe punt. You can see we punted it off the side there a little bit. Uh, we kind of fell asleep on our protection. They, they really were not a threat to us, but we just released and didn't block. But a nice, nice play by Jeff Sherman. The team has done a very good job of uh covering those kind of punts and uh, not letting the ball go into the end zone. Really have, uh, and Belden's done a pretty good job of getting it into a position where it can be down. So Stanford near its own goal line here. Nothing there, Rich Rule on the tackle, and third down and one. We try to go deep, try to get a, a big play on us, and uh, good, good pressure, throws the ball away. The uh, receiver had actually stepped out of bounds and wouldn't have caught it, although he did drop it anyway. And here you come right back and get a touchdown. Got great field position after a decent punt return, uh, play action, and we hit Damron Ricketts on the post corner, same route that they hit on us several times, but we hit this one for the touchdown. So Ricketts with his first touchdown reception of the year. I'm not sure that's right. Is that right, Tom? Yeah, his first one of the year. He's uh, been kind of blank. He had three or four last year. Yeah, he did have three last year on nine receptions. He's made so many big plays that uh, you kind of expect him to have the ball in the end zone more. Post corner route. He's got a uh, pretty good uh, route to run on a, on a sloppy field. And a big play here, fourth down. Uh, Kenny Wheaton doesn't miss many tackles, but he had, had the man, man, the man, missed the tackle there. Uh, we'd have been out. Stanford wouldn't have had this scoring opportunity, but uh, we didn't make the play on fourth down, and then Stanford converted for the touchdown. So, 38 to 14, there's still plenty of time left in this game with the offenses the way they're going, so you're going to stick with your uh, number one guys, and uh, Ricky Whittle, of course, giving you a decent field position here. Pretty decent, <laughs> and this is a very disappointing situation. I mean, great blocking and great effort by Kenny Wheaton out in front there. Ricky probably should have checked his motor and cut it back, but uh, it's not exactly his style, but just a, just a great job here. Uh, blocking by the front five and the wedge, something that's been lacking. You can see, uh, I think Bryant Jackson just rolled somebody right over there. Uh, Curtis Moore got a nice block, and and here is uh, some good effort downfield by Kenny Wheaton. Now, if he'd have just checked up a little bit and probably cut back, I think he'd have had his touchdown. But so be it. <laughs> And we, we were a little uh, describing, so people were so excited there, we ended up getting a delay of game penalty, and uh, uh, we ended up having to settle for a field goal. That's very disappointing. Yeah, the scoring drive was actually minus 10 yards. <laughs> but the, you get three points anyway. Once again, the defense does the job. You get it back, and here you come again. And it kind of looks like uh, here comes Eric Reed around the corner. Nice uh, seals the Stanford player inside. And, Dino's kind of picking up some of Ricky's traits here. Watch this forearm shiver into the tackler. Boom. Nice job by Dino. That's a, a very nice run. And a nice job. He should have cut that one to the right. If he cuts that one to the right, I think that's a big, big play. Well, next play, you do get a big, big play. O'Neal with good time. Patrick Johnson going deep. There he is again. Had to slow up just a little bit to cradle that ball in. But you can see Danny's looking at, on the short route originally here. And he, Almost pumps, then redirects and looks and sets and throws to Pat Johnson. And this is why some of those third down conversions he's doing well. This also was a third down, but 
Uh, he'd been breaking off those short ones, and people start to sit down on him. He can run by anybody. We're ready for the fourth quarter highlights, so Oregon's not done scoring in this one, so we have plenty to show you. As we pick things up, the Ducks have the ball. First play of the fourth quarter into the end zone. And Damon Griffin uh, on a slant pattern. Uh, we have two freshmen in there, Johnson and, and Griffin at receiver, and Damon gets his first touchdown of his Oregon career, and I'm sure he's going to have many more. So the extra point is good. And now the score is 48 to 14. That was an 85 yard drive and it took less than two minutes to go that distance. Here comes Stanford right back though. As Frost finds Shaw into the end zone. They had uh, kind of rotated their quarterbacks in that drive. Butterfield had come in the senior. But as you can see, Stanford gets it back again, trying to get another touchdown. Close that deficit, but the defense will not let it happen. Got a lot of clean jerseys in there right now. A lot of guys getting an opportunity to get some playing time. Nice job by Lamont Woods breaking up that pass. We tried the post corner again, and uh, we finally figured that one out. <laughs> and Graziani throws for the first down to Pat Johnson. Off the, the waggle pass here, we're looking at the fullback in the flat. This time they covered him a little better, and Tony saw Pat Johnson wide open and dropped it to him for the first down. Gain of 15, and then a couple of plays later, Raziani. This is probably not how you diagram them either, but who really cares? The tip and the touchdown. It's uh, improbable to say the least. Uh, we were again hoping to hit the fullback in the flat. You can see Pulo Malapiai get the bump there, slip out, to just try to get the first down, and Tony decides to go deep and. Uh, I think it's uh, Eli Swinton tips this ball, and uh, you got to credit Pat Johnson for being alert. He just caught it like he was supposed to receive it. <laughs> so the extra point is good, and that will conclude the scoring, but we still have a few more plays to show you. Some young guys getting action. In fact, on the next play coming up here, Jaya Figueres getting his first interception. Figueres has just become an absolute terror on the special teams, and that's just a, an outstanding play by the young redshirt freshman strong safety as he gets underneath coverage. We're in a little zone here, and it looks like there's room to throw it over him, but he drifts back right at the last minute and then jumps up in the air and makes a nice, nice interception. And so we will see one final offensive play, Marcel Stewart. Rob Williams getting a nice block, Eric Wynn getting a nice block, and Marcel Stewart picking up about 20 yards. You can see Rob Williams, the guard from Lebanon, gets the kick out block, and Marcel takes it up in there, and down the sidelines, and lowers his shoulder. Everybody's kind of getting that lower the shoulder routine. That's nice to see. Indeed, it is, and that's nice to see as well. The final score 55 to 21. It's time to talk about the Civil War coming up this week. Oregon State coming off a very impressive victory 21 to 3 over Washington State. They will be uh, closing out their season, a third consecutive home game for Oregon State. And uh, boy, for the Civil War to have the magnitude, the importance, it's going to be a televised game. Uh, we're talking about the Rose Bowl berth possibility for Oregon. Oregon State trying to get their fifth win for the first time in over two decades. Well, this is, shapes up as one of the great, great Civil Wars of all time. Well, it certainly uh, hasn't had this much on the line probably since uh, Tommy Prothrow and Lynn Casanova were coaching uh, at Oregon and Oregon State. Uh, they had uh, the Civil War it was a very meaningful game in those days because it, it did decide who went to the Rose Bowl several times and uh, it's been a long dry spell uh, since this game has had uh, the magnitude of importance that this game takes on. Uh, ABC who uh, comes to town to uh, televise it, uh, possible championship for us. Uh, uh, if Oregon State wins uh, the most wins they've had in I'm not sure how many years, quite a few years, yeah, five wins and three conference wins would be uh, a real improvement for them. Uh, and uh, Coach Pettipone's got their team playing very, very well. And uh, that it was an extremely impressive win over Washington State. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that game at Parker Stadium as Oregon State did, did a great job defensively and they did enough good things offensively to defeat Washington State, which we all know has a great defense of their own. Well, they really do. And, and the fact that... Uh, 
Oregon State, uh, I watched some of it last night uh, after I got back from L.A., and that counter play was one of the plays that they ran very successfully against Washington State. Uh, full back going up the middle. Uh, they, they can hit you so many ways. That's what uh, Salila was talking about. And here's a, a real nice pass completion, completion by Shanklin. Uh, he's a nice, uh, he's got a good arm. And uh, their passing game is, is further ahead now than it was a year ago. And there's that counter play again, counter lead uh, for the touchdown. J.J. Young had 100 yards. He's one of the premier backs in this league. Cameron Reynolds has done a great job as the other uh, back back there. Uh, Shanklin has gone most of the way this year for them. He's been in and out of the lineup with uh, some minor injuries. We understand suffered a broken nose, but he'll be ready to go. They've got a lot of weapons on offense, and look at that defensive swarm. Uh, uh, and they've, they've done a great job on us in recent years, uh, limiting our defense. And here's a, here's a score for Oregon State. Uh, they had two scores on defense, a fumble recovery by uh, Holmes, and then uh, that nice interception for the touchdown. Reggie Tongue, that's the third one he's uh, returned for a touchdown this year. And they come after you defensively, make no mistake about it, as Rocky Long has done a very good job with that defense. Well, they really do, and they, uh, they made it very difficult on the Washington State offense. They did a terrific job on it. So here is one of the, the big, big games in the country. And it's uh, nice to see it being played in the state of Oregon. Let's take a look at the uh, Pac-10 scores, and then we'll get to the schedule as well here. Set it up, you see that the Beavers defeating Washington State, SC over Arizona. SC and Oregon currently tied for the conference lead. Flip the page, and UCLA exploded offensively. They faced the Trojans this coming week, and Washington scored a couple of defensive touchdowns as well to defeat the California Golden Bears. So the schedule on the final weekend for most of the teams in the conference, Oregon at Oregon State, USC and UCLA, that ought to be a dandy at the Rose Bowl. The game in the Palouse, Washington and Washington State, the big game down at Berkeley. Arizona and Arizona State will play on Thanksgiving weekend to close out their regular seasons as well. Well, Coach, uh, one more game in the regular season. Uh, there's not much denying what the possibilities can be at this point because uh, if you win, you own the tiebreaker over SC even if they should win. Uh, you have an opportunity to do something that hasn't been done here in 37 years. And, and the good news is uh, uh, after uh, two struggling weeks uh, uh, over uh, Arizona State and Stanford, uh, we still control our own destiny. We put uh, the thing in our own hands uh, after we defeated Arizona and then uh, SC beat uh, Washington State. We controlled our own destiny. So if we take care of business, and we said this uh, two weeks Wrapped ago. Wrapped in a chewy nougat.